Hello and welcome back to another unboxing. This is the package by Schwerter Orchideen that I mentioned in the Bella Vista import, which is also where these plants in the background are from. And funnily in that Bella Vista import, I was like, oh, I don't really own anything pink in my life. Now I'm wearing this shirt, which is magenta, not pink. So don't come for me, Gorge. There you go, this is a quick overview over the plants that I've ordered. This is quite a big order and I feel like I shouldn't place that many, but I've seen that they are all still supposed to be anyways, pretty young. Let's dig in. Okay, so first things first, I want to say that this haul has been inspired by quite a few influences. And I will mention them as we go along. And the first one I want to point out is this one. This is Zygopetala Mackie. I saw this one actually on Julie's Orchid's channel. She has a huge specimen of this. And when I saw that Schwerter has it for four euros, I was like, no brainer, I'll just order it. So let's dig in. There you go. This is the plant. It's a very, very tiny division maybe, but I see one or two new growths starting on it. It has a pretty back bulb and the roots seem to be very promising for sure. I have ordered a lot of plants from Shayat and I really enjoy what they deliver usually. I think I've had only one plant where I was like, mm didn't arrive in the state I wanted it to, but it bounced back pretty quickly. I know that Schwerta has very mixed reviews in like the European Orchid YouTube sphere. I feel like I'm one of the ones who's been very lucky with what they delivered so far. This plant seems to be in pure sphagnum moss with a top layer of some grit. I know that these are very water loving and I've been talking a little bit also to Fernanda Nascimento in her comment section about psychopedalums and she's like, if you can grow Miltoniopsis, they're very similar. So let's see. My Miltoniopsis are doing pretty well unless I buy a plant that's already weak. I know, so I've had three Miltoniopsis and one of them died off just because it came with no roots in the middle of summer. So wish me luck. Next up, I have quite a few ink records in this order. These I ordered partially because I've seen a lot of them on Karin's Orchid's channel. She grows a lot of ink records and I kind of like them. I have an Ingrecum Leonis and an Ingrecum Digieri. I don't know, usually I'm not super into the monopodial orchids, but these ones seem really fun. And also I have seen a lot of them on the import list for Afri orchids. So I made a list with all of the end records I would like to order. And I've seen that many of them are actually available already from Europe, which is less expensive and they're also already established. And they're used to the environments and kind of seasons here on this hemisphere. So I sourced the end records that are available locally also from here, but then there are some more coming up from Africa directly. So that's really exciting. So let's just have a quick look at these ink records then. The first one I picked up here is Ingrecum Sesqui Pedale. If you see this package, you're probably like, what is in, that's no way it's in there. This was advertised as a plant in a six centimeter pot, flowering size, probably like five years or so. I know these get huge, but I really wanted one. And with my current space situation, having a small one is just, Perfect. So I'm really excited that I was able to grab one this size. I have also seen in Grecum Sesqui Pedale as a flask from Rollkorschdien or Aqua Genera Europe. I was going to pick that up, but I don't know. The recent heat wave made it very difficult for my very young seedlings. So I'm I'm a bit more cautious and with these slightly bigger plants, there is more leeway for neglect or stupidity from my side. So that's always a good one. Hey, there you go. I'm pretty sure these are two plants, not just one. Like, there might be a side shoot or side keiki, but I'm pretty sure these are two separate plants. So that's really exciting. I don't have a lot of experience with these monopodial, I guess taxonomically, they're not really vandacious per se, but you know what I mean? Like these Vanda-esque orchids, I'm not very experienced growing those, but I'm really excited to learn more about them. And having two makes it so much easier. But there you go, <laughs> they're so cute. Then I know these are pots. I ordered some tiny pots to be able to repot the young plants that I ordered because I completely ran out of pots. I'm not going to open these, I already know what they are. So next up we have, this is a very light 
pot. This is Ingrecum elephantinum. I just saw the flowers of it and was really intrigued. Pretty sure this one might be one that comes bare rooted, but let's see. Yes, this is usually how they ship their bare rooted plants. I really love that because I'm also running low on pots this size, so we you know. That's nice. There you go. This is a very, very tiny plant. I knew that this is a miniature species and I think it's been compared to Didieri a lot, but I find the flowers on this one a little bit more gracile, I guess. They're a little more pointed, elongated, more delicate. So I really enjoyed that. Not sure how long this is away from flowering size, but I consciously buy young plants knowing that they're first of all much less expensive so if I kill them it's fine but also it's for me more rewarding to then finally get them to bloom so yeah I guess I have a bit of an unconventional approach to growing orchids because for me flowers are kind of the bonus on top I really like just having them put on new roots new growth and everything so usually I don't buy plants for flowers I buy them for wanting to collect them or for I don't know their novelty or rarity aspect and the blooms then come on top that said if it's an ugly bloom I usually also don't buy it so Maybe I'm just full of myself here. Hey, next up, this is another plant I saw on Karin's channel. This is in Grecum Urbaneum Xerophyllum. I really enjoyed this one in particular because it has very greenish flowers. There you go, just told you I don't buy things for their flowers, now I'm talking about the flowers. But that really intrigued me. I do like these kind of verdant orchids where you may or may not notice right away that they're in bloom. And since ingrocoids are usually very fragrant as well, I'm really excited to have them in my collection and then, you know, maybe one day I'll just sit there in the evening and be like, oh, what is this beautiful fragrance? And then I go search for the flowers on this plant. So you never know. There you go. This is the plant I got. I love the shade of green on these leaves. I feel like the growth habit is very similar to the Sesame Pedale, but the color is just a little lighter and it's more shiny. So I really enjoy that. The, on the root front, this seems to be also doing really well. It seems to be potted up in some sphagnum moss. Let's see if I'll change it. I I've definitely noticed that the Ingrecum leonis that I have is a very thirsty plant. It gets shriveled up very easily and it also doesn't really like being in its bark too too much. I've noticed that recently since I added more of a coarse bark on top the new roots have been failing. I guess they do need a little more humidity and water retentiveness so I'll just take this hint and see if I pop them up in sphagnum but it, to me it looks also like they kind of need to be taken care of rather sooner than later because the sphagnum is maybe a little worse for wear. Next up is Ingrecum longicolor and I actually don't remember what this looks like. I don't, I must, like, I added it to the shopping basket for a reason, but I don't fully remember right now. Um, thesis brain, I'm sorry, like, my head is a little emptier than it usually is. This is the nice Ingrecum longi color. It looks like such a cute little plant. It may be a little shriveled. I think this would like a little more water, which it will receive very soon. And you can see that growth habit wise, it is very similar to the Urbaneum. Yeah, I'm really excited to see, you know, what, what this plant is going to do in the future. And if we're gonna get along, I think this might be like a root thingy that's just coming off there. It looks like it has a little side shoot as well, which is always a good thing. So yeah, let's see. Next up, I have yet another non-Cattleya plant. And this is a Paphiopetalum. I have been really into Paphiopetalum in general. And ever since blooming the Paphiopetalum Delanatii, I am really interested in the fragrant Paphiopetalums. And there are actually not many, but there are quite a few out there that do have a fragrance and one of the ones that's been mentioned as the most fragrant Paphiopetalum is Paphiopetalum hangianum which is the plant that we have here. Allegedly Paphiopetalum hangianum is supposed to have a very strong rosy fragrance. This one is supposed to be very young still. The website said it's like three or so years away from blooming size. And the price was definitely much higher than what I usually pay for, I don't know, plants that are still young. But I guess this is potentially a slightly more hard to find plant. There are other fragrant Paphiopetalums that are on my list. Malipuense, I hope that's how you pronounce it. 
This one is supposed to smell like raspberries and apple, which I find very delightful. Then there is Concolor, which is supposed to have also an apple-y, maybe caramel -y fragrance. And this is also something that Mark from Tokyo World, he um, has one of these plants and he agreed that that's what they smell like. I want to say there are some other ones on the list, maybe Rothschild Yana, which is supposed to have a peppery fragrance. But off the top of my head, I don't fully remember right now. I could. You know, maybe I should have read up on them, but you know, this is Hangianum and I'm really excited. For me, I'm also all about the model leaf Paphiopetalums, just because the texture of the plant, the leaves, everything is just so unique compared to the Sea of Cattleyas I have, that I really enjoy adding them to the collection to add just a little more diversity and interest. Oh my, oh my, this is a very, very tiny plant. Now I definitely see what they meant by blooming size in about three or so years. It has a very slight mottling on the leaves. Maybe that is going to get a little stronger as it matures. I have little flasklings of Suchoculiae, Tafipelum Suchoculiae, and they don't have any mottling yet. So maybe it's something they grow into, you know, like Dalmatians <laughs> with their spots. For sure, I will have to pop this up in a different mix because Schwerta puts them just in bark and I know Perfipedalums need the sphagnumos to really keep them well hydrated under my conditions. Now I just want to return to the normal scheduled program on this channel where we basically only talk about Cattleya and Lilia species. First up, I have a Cattleya Gascaliana cerulea. This is kind of a replacement for my Cattleya warneri cerulea, which I know it's not the same plant at all, but you know, they're both labiate Cattleyas, and I think they're both kind of smaller versions of Cattleya labiata directly. My Cattleya warneri cerulea has been struggling a lot with scale, and um, there have been moments where I almost threw it away. It is kind of dwelling in the corpusarium right now, so in my little quarantine zone. Been dealing with the scale now regularly and I feel like I'm kind of on top of it, but you know, I'm also not going to put too much hope into this plant because it's been struggling really a lot. So I went ahead and got kind of a replacement plant, something similar enough to fill that spot in my collection, which is a more compact labiate Cattleya, but as a smoother form. And there we go, this is the tiny plant. I guess it's like three or four years maybe old. Still very young, it's going to take a lot of time until this is going to flower, but again, that's not what it's about. It's about growing plants and challenging yourself. I think this is going to be a very interesting addition to my collection. For sure, I can also already tell you I am going to have to change the media for this one because I need sphagnum moss in my pots, especially for these youngsters. I just, with the current weather situation, you can see sweat. I don't really sweat easily, so it's over 30 degrees now. It's very dry, so, you know, I'm, I need that little bit of leeway when it comes to hydration because I just cannot water every day. Next up, um, speaking of my Cattleya warnery that's potentially withering off, this is the Tipo variant of this species. I am slowly building up kind of a collection of Cattleya warneries. So I have the Zeta Cerulea, I have an Alba, a Concolor, I have a Rubra Orlata, and now finally the Tipo. <laughs> it's the last edition now. <laughs> the Tipo. I guess also maybe Semi Alba would be a nice addition as well, but you know, one step at a time. There you go, this is the plant out of the package. It's been making a lot of size progression for sure. There is a little maybe burn on the leaf here. I'm going to keep an eye on that one for sure, but if it's not progressing it should be fine. Yeah. A happy little youngster Cattleya who doesn't love those. Next up, this is Cattleya muriana, which is a plant I have not really heard a lot about. I feel like this might be one of these more obscure Cattleya species you don't really see a lot. I am not aware of any of the YouTubers I'm in touch with having this in their collection. 
I've also never seen it in any haul or anything. So maybe this is a little bit of a collector's item and I'm really happy to have added it to my collection now. I have seen it is again one of these kind of greenish blooms and I'm super excited to see what this is going to look like when it's full grown and what it's going to smell like as well because they're supposed to be fragrant usually. Okay, in typical um, Schwerter young plant fashion, I feel like there are at least three individuals in this little pot. This is always a good thing in my opinion because it means you have more chances to ruin the plant. As we can all appreciate, it's very dehydrated. So for sure it's going to go into a little water for now. And then I will pot it up in my usual young Cattleya setup with kind of medium-ish size bark and some sphagnum moss to keep the hydration up and hopefully in I don't know 20 years we're gonna see flowers and then last but not least this is Lelia Angareri this is ridiculous Lelia so as all of the Brazilian Lelias this would be a Cattleya now but you know we still call them Lelias because we're old-fashioned I guess and this is one of these red flowering Rupetius Lelias. I recently got Lelia Millery, I want to say, which is also red. And this is now the Engrary, which I think they are pretty similar flower shape and color wise, but I think the growth habit should be pretty distinct. I really like these little Rupetius Lelias because I don't think they're super, super tiny, right? They're not miniature plants, but they're compact growers with very intensely colored blooms. I think I saw a sheath on my Sangiloba, which might have a bud in it. So let's see if we get the first Repiculus Lelia bloom. That would be really cool. But yeah, other than that, this is the Angrari and it's just another addition to the collection, right? You gotta catch them all, Gorge. Okay, so this seems to be a little bifoliate plant and in, it is in dire need of hydration and potentially repotting. It is, as you can see, still a very young plant and I want to pot it up maybe a little further down in the media just to make sure the new roots that should be coming out of that new growth soon will have access to hydration rather quickly. But yeah, there you go. This is the Lelia Angrari and I'm really happy to add it to my collection. So while repotting this plant, the growth just fell off and you can see the tissue is somewhat compromised here. I don't know if it picks up really well on camera, but can you see this kind of dark front to the base of these leaves? And also the inside here it looks almost like a little rot or something is going on with this plant. The bulb itself seems not 100% sure. It's very squishy as well. Can you see when I squeeze here very lightly, juice is coming out. So maybe it's the heat that got to this plant. So um, it's been, as I mentioned in the, the actual video, it's been very, very warm. So maybe there was some humidity trapped in there and it started to damage the tissue. But yeah, this plant immediately goes to the corpusarium. So there you go, this is the haul from Schwerter Orchideen. Um, quite a few plants, all of them are still pretty young and compact, so I don't think we're going to run out of space because of these additions very soon. But I think in the years to come, as they grow mature and develop, it will be a really nice journey with these plants. And I feel like that's really all orchid growing is about, right? It's about the journey is about learning, challenging yourself and accomplishing greatness. So yeah, with that said, thanks a lot for watching and um, I'll talk to you very soon with more exciting uh, upcoming things. And yeah, with that said, boom. Zygopadalum macaque. Macaque. The first one I want to point out is this one. This is Zygopact. <laughs> The first one I want to point out is this one, which is Zygopedala Macchia. 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 The first one I just picked up here is Ingrecum Sescu. The first one I just picked up here is Ingrecum Sescu Pedale. The first one I picked up here. The first one I picked up here is Ingrecum Sescu Pedale. Why can I not say Ingrecum Sescu Pedale? Am I having a stroke? 
The first one I picked up here is in Greco Sesqui Pedale. And I love the shade of green on these leaves. I feel like the growth habit is very similar to the Sesqui Pedale. Now I can say it, that's really interesting. 